everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Spring is almost here. The sun is higher in the sky and that was all the inspiration we needed for this week's tutorial. We have designed a sunshine pendant and you can make this using crochet thread or embroidery floss. We're going to show you how to add a little bead to the center, how to install a jump ring which literally turns it into a pendant, and we've even got some fun tips on turning it into a necklace too. So, let's grab our steel hooks, some crochet thread, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we'll stitch it up together. Easily find all of our crochet tutorials. Type youtube.com slash Jada and Stitches into your web browser, and we'll see you there. In order to make our sunshine pendants, you're going to want around 10 yards of embroidery floss or crochet thread. This is a size 10 crochet thread and it's variegated. So this is from my stash. This is a vintage skein of orange, yellow, white variegated crochet thread. It's 100% cotton. You'll need around 10 yards of that. Uh, the optional bead at the center, if you've got some glass beads lying around or a pretty little bead you want to work in, you can have one of those. To turn it into a pendant, it's very helpful to have a little metal jump ring. These are rings that have a little sort of slice in the top. They can open, be put on something and then closed and it's helpful to have a pair of pliers in order to manipulate your jump ring. If you're turning it into a full-on necklace like I have here, a handful of beads, I have some wooden beads and some cording is nice. This is just some silk cord but you can use hemp or uh, leather, whatever you might have lying around. You want a pair of scissors, you want a needle with an eye that is fairly small because we're dealing with small stitches but big enough that your crochet thread or embroidery floss can fit through it. And the hook we're using is a steel hook. So nice small hook. This is a 1.5 millimeter. It's also known as a 2 or a 2.5 in the UK. Um, the US also might know this as a 7 steel hook. Either way, you want to use a small little hook that you feel is comfortable working with the crochet thread or the embroidery floss that you've chosen for the project. So hook size, really, really small, but the exact size doesn't matter too much. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're working very small, so it's important to stay patient with yourself. <laughs> and if you don't use hooks on crochet thread that are this small very often, then you're doing a little bit of um, sort of sample or experimentation just before you get started, just to kind of warm up, can be very helpful. We're going to start with a cinch circle. And remember, we're working very, very small, so you want to be patient with yourself. Once you've secured your cinch circle, you can chain two more. And this chain three, that's three chains in total, counts as a double crochet. Into our cinch circle, we're going to work 23 double crochet. So 23 double crochet into that circle. Remember that you're working very, very small, so take your time. Try not to split your thread or your embroidery floss. You're always working over top of that little short tail because we're going to cinch up the circle when we're done. And that chain three that begins is going to count as a double crochet. So I'm going to get in nice and close here so you can see those there's your chain three. I've got two more double crochets worked into my ring so far. It's very small stuff. So go ahead, take your time, and work 23 double crochet into that cinch circle with the chain three. That will be 24 in total. The chain three at the beginning counts as a double crochet plus 23 double crochet all worked into that cinch circle. That's 24 stitches in total. There's our little short tail. We're just going to pull it as tightly as we can to cinch up that middle circle. It's not going to close completely and we don't want to cause any rippling to our stitches, but you want it to be fairly tight, uh, nice and even all the way around. And then we're just going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that we made. So get your hook in the top of that chain three. I'm going to work over top of that little short tail as I progress. So I'm going to kind of keep that up and out of the way. So that is the center of our sunshine. Now we're going to add those little sun flares that make up 
a sun looking shape. And there's going to be two different sizes. We're going to have a tall one and a short one. We're going to start with a short one. So we're going to chain four right where we are. So chain four. I'm just going to pause every so often so you can see what it looks like. Chain four. You're going to skip the first chain from the hook. So it's really, really small, but you're going to skip the first chain. You're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Again, nice and slow. So slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Single crochet into the next chain. And half double crochet into the last chain. So a small sun flare is chain four, skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the second chain, single crochet into the next chain, half double crochet into the last chain. So it's three stitches tall. Then you're going to skip the next stitch along, so I'm going to try and this little guy here is the next stitch along your center and it's a little bit pulled because we joined with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. So There it is there. We're going to skip it and instead we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. So every time you finish a sun flare you're going to skip a stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch. There we go. So there's a short sun flare. Now we're going to do a tall one. We're going to chain six. So chain six. Skip the first chain from the hook and slip stitch into each of the next two chains. We're going to single crochet into each of the next two chains. And then we're going to half double crochet into the last chain. So a tall sun flare is chain six. Skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the next two chains, single crochet into the next two chains, half double crochet into the last chain, and when you get back down to the sun center, you're going to skip the next stitch and slip stitch into the stitch after that. So skip one, slip stitch. You're going to have six short flares and six tall flares all the way around the center of your sun. So we had 24 stitches. We're skipping exactly half of them because half of those stitches will sit sort of in the middle of the bottom of these sun flares. So that leaves you with 12 stitches and half of them are going to be short flares and half of them are going to be tall flares. So that's sort of the way you can think about it. After you do a tall sun flare, you go back to doing a short sun flare. And that is chain four. Skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the second chain from the hook, single crochet into the next chain, and half double crochet into the last chain. You skip over top of the next stitch along the base of your sun, so it would be that one there. Go to the next one and slip stitch. I'm still working over top of my little short tail. It's about to disappear here. There we go. So short flare, tall flare, short flare, and of course after a short flare you work a tall flare, chain six, skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the next two, half or single crochet into the next two, half double crochet to finish, and then skip the next chain or the next stitch, I should say, along your sun, sun center and slip stitch into the stitch after that. You're going to repeat that all the way around and you'll have six short flares and six tall flares at the end of this row.
Once you get all the way around and you work your last short sun flare, you're going to have one skippable stitch left and what looks like the false stitch, which is what we built, we sort of chained out of to begin our first short flare. So obviously we want to finish with one tall flare. And once you have your tall flare finished, you're just going to skip the next stitch and join right at the base of the chain four that began your first short sun flare. So you'll have six short and six tall sun flares all the way around. You can snip your thread, give yourself a few inches. This is especially important if we're going to add ourselves a bead. You can just grab it, pull it back through that last loop on your hook and pull it nice and tight to fasten off. And you can take a moment to sort of pull out and flatten all your little sun flares. And if you want to add a little bead to the center, I'm going to show you how to do that now. You're going to take your needle and thread up that long tail you left behind on your sun. And then you just want to sort of weave it through a couple of loops on some stitches just so that it's, it comes out kind of at the edge of that center. So I've just got it through a couple of little loops there. Nothing fancy and just pull it down just so it kind of runs down the back of your sun. Next you want to weave a or thread a bead up onto your tail. So onto that tail of yarn and it's nice if the bead is sort of just big enough that it fills that center. I'm going to just pull my yarn right through the middle to the front. So my little bead is about the same size as the center. Now if you wanted to sew on a bead that was a little bit bigger, you'd bring your yarn or your thread through the center to the front of your sun, thread on your bead, and then you're going to just poke your needle through some of the stitches, right through it, and just pull that to the back. So you kind of come through the front, come through from behind, <laughs> through the center, weave your bead through, or if it's a really big bead, thread the bead on after you bring your yarn to the front, and then poke your needle through just between some of those stitches down there. And you can just make a little knot on the back, so just run your needle underneath a loop on the back of your sun. Make a simple tiny little tight knot, and then you're going to weave that tail of yarn. Try not to pull too tight. And you're just going to weave that tail in and underneath some of those stitches from row one. Back and forth, maybe twice. You want to weave in enough of your tail so that it doesn't want to undo. Once you've woven it in, you can just trim any excess and that should not want to come back out. Flip it back so that it's right side facing and pick one of the tall sun flares. Uh, I think I might go with this orange one here. This one. Pick that to be the top of your pendant and we're going to add our little jump ring to it. First you just want to gently open your jump ring a little bit so that you've got enough space to just take a piece of that and weave it through the top loop there we go. The top loop of that tall sun flare. This is all very small work. Then you're just going to hold it between your thumb and forefinger and pinch it so that the two little jump ring ends come back together. You want to try and get them as even as possible. The point of putting a jump ring on at the very top means that the jump ring is going to sort of, the narrow part of it will face you and that will be what allows your pendant to hang flat against your neck. And all you have to do now is thread it onto some cord, add a few beads, 
and you're done your little necklace. You can add whatever beads you want to either side of your little pendant once it's hanging on your cord. And a really simple way to just join your cord to make sure that it always is big enough to fit over your head is to cut it so that it uh, one big round of it will fit over top of your head and then take each end. And as you can see here, I took one end and I just tied a simple little knot around the cord on one side and then I took the other end and I tied a simple little knot around the cord on the other side. And this allows you to sort of move the, the knots back and forth, make it so that it'll fit over top of your head, and then once it's on, you can tighten it back up again. So you just sort of pull those cords, and you can really adjust how long or short your necklace hangs around your neck. Another thing too, if you're dealing with nylon or sort of satin cord, if you run the ends over an open flame, like on a candle or a lighter, just, just a split second, it will help melt the ends and they won't fray on you. And that's a nice way to finish off your little necklace. I really am digging the 1970s vintage boho kind of vibe that this has, that whole Earth Mother thing. Really loving it. It's got summer beaches, outdoor carnivals and festivals kind of written all over it. I also think this would look really cool in the center of one of those knotted hemp necklaces. I have a lot of plans for these little pendants. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed making one along with us this week, and we'll see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a sunny week. Bye, everyone. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.